Hey everybody, we are b -b 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 back um, for another episode, um, this time with all the bells and whistles working and all the technical difficulties solved, we hope, um, knock on wood and all that. Um, hello everybody, uh, listeners and viewers, and hello to uh, my poor suckers, my players. Um, happy birthday! Rose, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hey, Rose. Now go, now go back behind you and uh, behind yourself there and blow out all the candles. But I just lit them. <laughs> Make a wish. Um, I, are there an appropriate number of candles? <laughs> that's a good you question. They are really yeah. nice, by the way. <laughs> um, I... I'm going to uh, give you a point of moxie. Happy birthday. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Um, I felt bad. She was down to two. <laughs> um, we actually haven't, there haven't, uh, the last game session, there ha there weren't a lot of a card flips. On, there wasn't, hasn't been a lot of moxie expenditure for a little while. Um, so we'll see about uh, maybe uh, remedying that with some action where we can see if we can try to kill off Ollie. Because um, before we started, before we hit the record button here, um, Owen was remarking about how unkillable Ollie is and how tough and powerful he is. Now Pretty that, close to unkillable. Now that all the characters uh, uh, are leveled up again. So um, we're on the back nine, as it were, um, of this campaign. This is We are over the halfway point. We're kind of rolling into all sorts of character developments and resolutions and, um, and whatever else we come up with as we go. Um, let's see, what happened last week? Uh, the group found themselves in... Um, a different Chicago, uh, and uh, after having um, found uh, Satroka's father, who was mourning the loss of his daughter there, the other Satroka, who's dead, um, and, uh, and his wife, uh, the group went about kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do as far as um, getting home, um, and also, a you know, it's a question of what they can do um with this world that they're in and if there are any if there's any business they want to attend to um let's see the, the fellas went off to talk to um arnold small um you, ma you managed to hunt him down through the phone book and uh that was the fellow that um first introduced trem gear or that 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 crazy fire pistol um that uh that rose had um and he agreed to talk to his wife about making um a device that will allow you that will allow you to cross between the different chicagos um, but she needs time to do that and he also warned you that that uh, device is not necessarily going to be wholly stable hey we got a cat <laughs> um did you take like animal affinity in cat form <laughs> <laughs> No. It, are, are you planning to swap the cat in <laughs> to play you that time? Um, yeah. Let's see what else. What were the ladies up to? You guys, um, Rose. What, what what did you guys do? You went to the well, Hall of we Records. Went, yeah, we went to the Hall of Records to find out if uh, important people in Rose's family were existent or not in this version of Chicago. Which no, they they are still dead. But Rose is also dead, so you know. Yeah, the other Rose is dead. Um, Rose's the other Rose's father is dead, but no, no uh, specific information about the other Rose's mom. Um, although I don't know how you know broken up you are over that, considering um, Rose's um, relationship <laughs> with with her mom back in uh, the Chicago. You all know. Um, and then. Uh, Satroka and Rose, uh, why don't you tell us, Shireen? Satroka, what, what, what did you guys... You guys uh, decided to go on a little... There was a montage, as I recall. There was a lead-up to the montage, and then there was a montage. Oh, that's right. We bought some clothes and stuff. Yeah, um, with, with what money? With some money we may have acquired... <laughs> From Through. all the poor saps that went to the library. <laughs> it was really uh, 
crime of convenience more than like a targeted assault. Sure. That's fair. Um, and uh, you were at the library to to work out, um, at least try to get a sense of what happened here as far as yeah. why this Chicago uh, devolved into violence the way it did. And basically it boils down to um, the, the tensions between the various gangs, in particular the Irish and the Italians, uh, boiled over. Um, and just kind of kicked off in such a way uh, that never really happened, um, at least not yet, back in the Chicago you know. Um, and so those two major gangs, along with a, a variety of the other smaller gangs, kind of um, broke into fighting um, over territory and um, prohibition, uh, you know, the sale and, and importation of alcohol from elsewhere and all their other rackets and prostitution and gambling and everything else that they're doing. Um, and it got really out of hand. Um, let me think, is there anything else we got to recap? Is that, is that the basics of it? We can always fall back and, and remind everybody of stuff if, uh, if we think of anything. So the question now is, um, you've all leveled up, so you all have fancy new things you can do. Um, and those will come into play as we go. Um, we don't necessarily have to announce anything here unless somebody has something they'd like to actually make known. Um, in or out of character. Everybody's playing it close to the vest. Well, <laughs> no, I think I, mine will be fairly obvious, I suppose. You turn into a uh, cat. Once, well, if she gets threatened, okay. let's say. Okay, well, I'll, 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 I'll bring something along to threaten you. Toot sweet. Um... So now I guess it becomes a question of you've got at least some time to kill. You don't know for sure how long it's going to take Angela Small to create your uh, plane hopping device to get you back to your Chicago. Seems weird to say it that way. I'm trying, I'm trying to come up with better, better terminology. I should just call it trem gear because um, it sounds a little D&D-ish to call it plane hopping. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, to get your, uh, your, your, your trim gear gate gun or whatever it's going to be. Um, so the group of you I know has, uh, at least some of you may have um, thoughts on what you want to take care of while you still are here um, because you're not heading home right this moment. So take it away, players. Uh, well, I'd want to um, talk to Ollie. Uh, about, I had a bit of an idea, an idea. Okay. <laughs> um. Tell it to his chin that we can see now. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, I'm thinking about what I tell Papa when we leave. Because I don't know if we come back. I don't know if we take him with us. That's probably a terrible idea. But he will be heartbroken if I go and say nothing. I want to find the killer and have some uh, justice either uh, police or whatever i don't care something to make him feel better and then we tell him because you have you have gift from from god i we tell him i think because I, I think is why we are here. To avenge. And we Does tell him. Reasonable? So we tell him God send us for this. And we can't stay. And I think that help him not be so. Hmm. So tell him the truth then. Let's do it. 
Thank you. Anytime. <laughs> Aww. Oh, they're so cute. Dutiful boyfriend. Help mm-hmm. him, helping her out. Let, let's go find a killer and kill him. <laughs> her, it, them. Yeah, yeah. You know how it made one, six, whoever. You know, I'm oh. down for it. Whatever. <laughs> He's so supportive. <laughs> Just go rampage through alternate Chicago. <laughs> Just reminding me that Archer. Bad bag. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's that's what I'll be wanting to do is is researching tracking down on who. Okay. Um, who is responsible for that? Um, are you getting the others involved now that you've got Ali on board? If they want to be, but I understand if they have other business to attend to. Like, I want to support them as much as, you know. I guess the, I guess the question is, do you pose the question to them? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the question has been posed. We don't have to necessarily recap the, uh, the exact same yeah. question being asked three times. <laughs> Um, so everybody, uh, this is, you know, and this is, this can all, this is all taking place wherever you guys want it to be. It's not like you're sitting in front of Satroka's, um, not father, um, (laughs) having this discussion. Um, you can be, you know, out and about or, um, what was it you guys were up to crap? Oh, you went to see right at the at the very end of the session. You all went to see uh, the the location of the uh, um, the pub of Sully's and saw that it was all burnt out and everything. And then you you hunted down um, the fellow who was with um, that happened last week, right? That's how we ended it, I believe. Right, right, right. You hunted down the uh, um, Ben who, or uh, yeah, Big Ben who was with. Um, the other, uh, you know, well, well, with Oliver <laughs> from this Chicago when he disappeared. Um, and uh, I believe there was a bad joker that was flipped and uh, it kind of boned your chances of getting too much more information out of him. Um, but uh, the, the, essentially, it, you know, it confirms what you had, the rumor that you had heard, which was that he, um, Oliver, kind of disappeared out of nowhere. Um, around the time that the group of you arrived. So that's a quick recap on that. Um, do you have any thoughts about, uh, you know, if this is something you guys are going to, you are all going to go do is, um, you, you don't have contacts here. And um, with the exception of Oliver, you don't know anybody here. You know, Ollie could, Ollie can potentially pass himself off um, as knowing people because you know for sure that he has a duplicate who was here. The rest of you, um, we don't know what happened to the other Kirin, and we know that um, the other Satroka and the other Rose are all, are both dead. Yeah, so like part of that was, you know, library again, because you can read all the old papers. Um, And, uh, you know, there's also just uh, going to you know, the local cafe or whatever. Um, And, and finding the locals and just saying, Hey, you know, I heard about this. You guys, what's the story, you know, start to talk to people. All right. Well, Um, with the, um, that's an option. Yep. With the, with the library, you can find out the very basics of what happened with the fire. Um, yeah. that, uh, there was, it was just a regular day of business and there was an explosion, um, which implies probably something that runs off of gas, which could have been the, the, the stove or the lights. Um, yeah. because, um, you know, there are a fair number of, of buildings still, um, now that don't ha- don't, don't yet have electric lighting. They have gas lights, mm-hmm. um, that, uh, there, there was an explosion, um, of some manner. Um, okay. it's, it's possible that that could also mean an explosive device. It could be you know, a, a dynamite. Yeah, or like, cover up. That yeah. sort of thing is not that, that any anything more specific than that is not covered in the newspaper because you know well mm-hmm. enough that that's something that investigators keep close to the vest because they don't want to divulge any details because they use knowledge of those details to determine whether or not somebody who says they know something is telling the truth. 
I might sneak, consider sneaking into the police records. Oh, good. We're going to sneak into the courthouse. Um, <laughs> or, well, in this, case, in this case, the precinct. Sure, the precinct. <laughs> Alternatively, we could try spreading some money around. Right. Maybe bribe some officers. Maybe spend some moxie to see if we can get a contact in the local PD. Oh, yeah. Broke, I have like 200 ish dollars between the both of us. Yeah. I don't think we're getting a good contact. Uh, two, $200 back in the 1920s was like not an insignificant sum of money. Especially yeah. if you're yeah, the, the multiplier is fifteen. Yeah. Multiply what you have by fifteen dollars. That's what it. That's what it is in today's money. That's you know approximate. So a, a couple grand will uh, get someone to talk. Are we trying to figure out who killed Sajoka? Is that what I missed here? Also, <laughs> trying to, uh, yeah, right. trying to figure out trying to figure out who set the who who we, who uh, blew up the restaurant. We got a name last uh, last. Uh, Last session, Elizabeth the Torch Hollis. Do we know if she had anything to do with the fires? Um, you don't specifically know. That's okay. what, like again, probably if there was, if the police suspect anything um, regarding her, that was probably something that was kept from the papers. Okay. Um, the same way they didn't probably say anything about James Belcastro, who is another well-known uh, fire bomber, uh, James. Uh, uh, James Mad Bomber Belcastro, who is um, kind of uh, Capone's problem solver when it comes to that sort of thing. He's uh, and, and and you know you you picked up on his name here in some of those uh, news art newspaper articles. You know the name from back home as well. Um, that uh, yeah, he's a he's a demolitions expert. Basically, he's a a firebug. Okay, so both of them are kind of likely suspects. Potentially. Out of character for a second, didn't Rose kind of get an answer to that question last session, or am I remembering wrong? You don't have to tell me what it is, just like... An answer to which question? The the who killed the this world, Satroka, who blew up the restaurant. I feel like that was... It's possible that I'm just not remembering. Um, Rose, do you call, recall something, any, anything specific? Am I... I remember. Because uh, I remember Satroka having to step away from the microphone for a while, or the yeah. her headset. And then having a conversation about uh, Ice Lady being Fire Lady in this area. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that, I, that's what I wasn't, it, don't remember if those were connected or not. Yeah, Sorry. well, that's what it basically came down to. Is that yeah, and Rose, you know, made the 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 lovely connection of uh, it, you know. The, the comic book connection, right, of the evil twin, basically, of, of them having diametrically opposed powers. Um, the Ice Queen, as you come to call her back in your Chicago um, over here. Which is, is, like, totally why she now understands the why they needed her ice gun in the first place. Potentially. <laughs> well, that's why she needed a fire gun in the other world. <laughs> Um, so it becomes it, it, it's at this point, it's, you know, like you've you've got a few options that is, um, you know, going the social route and trying to find the right people who know some stuff. You can bribe people. Um, there's trying to get information from the police. Um, you yeah. Know, there's going or even, to, into the you know, there's um, Kieran, your idea of bribe. Maybe we bribe the clerk in the records office just to. Let us read for 10 minutes. You know, I could shake down some people too. People seem to be quite afraid of me here. <laughs> Why could you use that I, to my advantage? I, I think I not want us to get arrested. <laughs> well, I mean, the type of people that are going to be sending fire bombers over to your restaurant aren't the kind of people that are going to call the police when somebody comes for a shakedown. Well, Ollie, you're also wanted in this county, and I'm pretty certain that means you have to stay silent. Is why you wear a hat. Well, yes. <laughs> I wear the hat. Fine. We'll do it your way. We try uh, be nice, and then if that not work, you scare it. If we can get a lead, I might be able to do some spying unobserved. 
I might be able to help picked you. Picked up a new trick recently. Oh. Okay. I may be able to help you get a lead in some sense. Oh. Well, I'm pretty sure everyone knows that I'm not too bad with words. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we got, we all go, uh, or just you two. Maybe just you two. We wait outside. Where are we well, going? Yeah, that's to my question too. Courthouse with uh, records. So you okay. can read the police report. Shouldn't be too much trouble. Um, well, if this is, th and this, 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 ex this, uh, uh, um, explosion, this firebombing didn't take place terribly long ago and nothing you saw makes you think that it has, you know, from, from, from the newspapers makes you think that it has been solved. Right. So it this might records for this is going to be in the precinct itself. There's, I mean, this is an ongoing investigation. Um, not, not you know, no, no, uh, nothing has been processed to the courts because no one has been arrest, arrested or indicted or arraigned. Mm. Do you think we still uh, find a way? It's just a question of going to the precinct rather than the mm -hmm. the courthouse, if that's what you're, what, what, what you're looking yeah. at. All right. Let's well, do it. There's a lot of ways to get into a precinct, especially if it's filled with men. <laughs> I probably shouldn't be anywhere near police precinct right now, don't you think? No. Probably not. Uh, I think Fair. we both stay and uh, wait for you. And you call if you need. Kieran, take this in case there's trouble. And he hands you the dynamite. <laughs> He's been hanging on to you the whole time. <laughs> I'm not taking that with me to a police station. That seems like a bad idea. How about you hang on to that? If things go really bad, you might need it. You, you yeah, but if things go officer, really bad for you, the officer says, Could I see your identification, room? please? And he goes to his pocket and dynamite sticks fall out, roll across the floor. <laughs> They're red looks like the bit, like in Looney Tunes. Well they start fall they start falling out of his sleeves like he's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Um, <laughs> I'll keep it safe. Okay. So... We'll use this for something soon. <laughs> um, so the two of you, uh, uh, Rose and Kieran, are going to go um, take a look at the... Um, you're, are are going to walk into the local precinct and yep. see what you can find out. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, you can uh, walk up to the precinct and through the front door of the place easily enough. And you are both disguised still because we changed all your clothes and everything. Okay, that sounds right. Yep. Um, of course, if if your <laughs> duplicates are dead, <laughs> nobody's looking for you. But they might be looking. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, Okay, so you definitely you, doesn't look like this. So therefore, yeah. she doesn't care at this point in time. <laughs> you walk into the precinct. Um, it is a buzz with activity, and uh, which is not surprising given the state of Chicago right now. There are um, a variety of officers who, uh, you know, uniformed officers who are processing people kind of back at at uh, at desks um, beyond the uh, the check in area. There's uh, you know there's that. That, that big high desk um, right when you walk in and there's a, um, a sergeant sitting there um, right now talking to um, a couple of citizens. Um, uh, in chairs around the front, there are a variety of uh, people, um, some of whom are filling out forms, some of whom are just sitting looking really bored and like they've been waiting for a while. Um, and uh, you can kind of see through uh, through the the bullpen where all the the cops are processing and, and taking statements and so forth, you can see one spot where there's a door that has um, like a half light, you know, half glass in it, um, and inside of there um, is uh, looks looks to be an office, and there's um, a man behind a desk who's talking to two um, female um, 
uh, 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 uniformed officers, appear, apparently female, long hair, um, kind of back in ponytails, um, who uh, he's he's not shouting to the point that you can that you can hear him, but he looks like he's given a real stern talking to, like there's something going on back there. Um, and then there are a vari- you know there are a number of other doors that lead further back into the uh, uh, back into the building. Um, that's what you see. What would you like to do? I'm gonna look at Kira and ask, "Do you want to cause a scene?" I mean, I can if you want me to. Well, there's a lot of police officers here. I think it may be easier than just me attempting to sneak past all of them. <laughs> um, I mean, I could get somebody else to cause a scene. I'm good mm-hmm. at that. <laughs> um, I'm assuming there's like a bathroom or something here, right? Um, not right up in the front. No. Okay. The yeah, bathroom is back. The uh, um, no, not there. There's there's no public restroom right up in the front here. Um, quick note, a quick uh, question. Um, Ali and Satroka, where are you? What are you doing while this is all going on? It's a very good question. I have no idea. <laughs> Can you like maybe just want to go? Do you want to be nearby? Or are you off doing something else? Um. Uh... So they firebombed the restaurant, correct? Correct. Or they blew up the restaurant. And it's not the same place we've been staying in? Have we been staying in, like, they rebuilt it? Or have we been staying in? No, we've been staying in the jewelry store. Um, Okay, so do you want to go, like, investigate the site? Yeah. And see if we can find anything that way? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you go to Antonio's, what's left of Antonio's Trattoria, an Italian restaurant. Yeah, and we'll go uh, search around there. Okay. See what um, so you guys are off doing that. Okay, back inside. Uh, what's the what's the scene plan? What what kind of a scene are you going to cause? Now you wish you had that dynamite, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> dynamite comes in handy. <laughs> this has become Chekhov's dynamite. You realize, right? We introduced this several several sessions ago. Somebody better <laughs> blow something up before this campaign is over, or I'm oh, going to have words with all of you. I intend to blow something up the first opportunity I get. <laughs> Fair enough. Back to uh, back to the incident. Uh, precinct. Kieran's going to walk up to, I guess, the booking officer, whoever's at the sure. who's ever at the thing. And um, go, there's a there's a term for it. It's always a sergeant, and I can't think of what it is, but yeah. Um, it's like the desk sergeant, sort something of something like that. Yeah, we'll call him that really bored looking guy like a, a elderly looks like he's you know he's one of these guys that kind of got made his made it to sergeant um when he was younger and you know took the sergeant's exam and, and made it to sergeant and probably did some pretty good work and then just never quite made it to lieutenant or detective or anything like that and he just kind of floated at sergeant and now he's like you know he's probably doesn't have the quickest reflexes he's uh he's older he's a little on the chubby side and he's uh he's the desk sergeant now Scully and Hitchcock from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Bucket of chicken it's, wings. It's, right sure, there. it's sure not Jeffords. <laughs> so it's a question uh, of was whether whether he's is he medically infirm or is he just a disgusting pervert? Then that's your that's your <laughs> Scully versus Hitchcock thing. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> top of the morning to you. Um, after he gets done handling the people up at the desk, he looks up to you and says, what are you here was for? I wa- was wondering if you could help me with a spot of information. Maybe. What can I do for you? Uh, there's been a series of uh, fires and bombings. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> there has. Well, to be a little uh, more specific. Specifically, uh, restaurant. Uh, where is the restaurant, or what was its name, or where was it located? Antonio's Chatteria. Uh, Antonio's Chatteria. I was wondering if you could maybe help me get some more information. Uh, 
brother of mine went there and hasn't been heard from since. And uh, and anything, anything you could do to help, please. I've got to know. I've got to know who did this. Well, everyone, uh, everyone whose body was identified there next to kin were notified. There were a few people that we weren't able to notify. I've got to know who did this. I'm sorry, sir. I can't help you with that. It is an ongoing investigation. I'm not at liberty to speak on it. Are you sure? There's nothing I can do to maybe help persuade you. I'm quite sure. And Kieran, you know, kind of like casually <laughs> $200 just underneath of his... Flashes his, the <laughs> He doesn't flash it. He like kind of like slides his hand over and just like makes it so that you can just barely see the edge of the two bills. Rose sees what he's doing is now completely exasperated. Um, are you doing anything in response to it, or are you uh, are you spending your full round? Are, are, you, are you taking a full round exasperation check? Wait for it, Rose. Being, being exasperated is a full round action that provokes attacks of opportunity. By the way, <laughs> wait, no, wrong game. Go ahead. Do, do you have something up your sleeve, or are you going to wait to see how this pans out? I'm going to wait to see how this pans out. And if it pans out poorly, then Toby here is going to get a good punch in the face. <laughs> All right. Um, let's, uh, let's see a, uh, let's see a charisma based check. Or if you're, if you're pulling something off, trying something with a power, um, cause I know you can do that. You sneaky mm -hmm. devil. Um, uh -huh. Because this this start. is this is Chicago, and plenty of cops are crooked. Yeah, so I'm, I'll start with the charisma check, and we'll go from there. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's gonna be okay. Kieran is pretty good at talking. Let's see how I do. Eight of spades. That's not super great. Queen of hearts is pretty good. Uh, we'll stick with queen of hearts. Um, he, uh, takes the money mm -hmm. and says, uh, what would you be looking for specifically? I need a name. I need to know who they think did this. That's all I want. Just a name. He weighs his options. You can see the gears turning in his head. He says, Come back here after my shift this evening when it's dark. Okay. Cut two. Oh, hold on. I mean, let me let me let me cut uh, to Rose real quick. Uh, like, it appears that Kieran has bribed the desk sergeant. <laughs> anything? Anything? Rose nods to herself before making a mental note. Kieran needs to steal back more money. <laughs> um, okay, cut to the trattoria to the re the remains of the building. Um, you could, uh, you get to, uh, um, like a four story masonry building, um, that, uh, the, the bottom of it was, uh, you know, a portion of it was clearly blown out. There was an explosion. You can see that they've, they've boarded up windows. Um, there's, um, another entry to the building, uh, like the, the restaurant itself, you know, the, there was an entry on the street, like, you know, you can see where they boarded up like a door, a double doorway. Um, and then they boarded up windows. Um, but then further, you know, down along the street a little ways, there's another entry that actually kind of gets you into the building. Um, and it looks like there's apartments up above. So it was like, you know, apartments with a couple of storefronts um, down below. And um, the upper portions of the building um, still appear. They're like there's curtains in a few of the in, in, in some of the windows in one of the apartments. You see some motion of somebody walking around. Um, 
you know, in the, the entryway, it looks like it's in good enough repair that uh, the building itself has not been abandoned outright, but the, the, you know, where the restaurant was, was blown out. So there's still tenants living above it. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, it becomes, it becomes a question of like, what was the, ex- how bad was the explosion? If it was mostly, if it was a lot, if there was a lot of like explosive force, then yeah, they'd probably shut the building down. But if it was more fire, um, then, you know, it just, a fire spread quickly and it trapped a bunch of people and killed them, but it didn't do any, you know, it didn't do enough significant structural damage. Yeah. Um, and if it's a heavy masonry building, it takes quite a bit of force. You think uh, we maybe ask uh, people who live here? Oh, why don't we just try the back door and take a look and take a peek inside ourselves? Well, okay, we start. Yeah, yeah. go. Try to open the back door and see if we can get inside. Okay, um, sure. Uh, you go back. Uh, there's, um, you know, back around to the. The back of the building, um, you know, there's another spot where a doorway has been uh, boarded over. You're guessing that that was, uh, that's a doorway to, like, for a delivery entrance. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, there's, there's like, not a door. <laughs> it's, it's all boarded up, but you can tear the boards down. Um, you're kind of, you're secluded from the street, so you're not really, mm-hmm. um, like, every so often somebody passes, you know, like there's there's activity you can see kind of passing by the alley the end of the alleyway at the street. So if somebody were to stop and really look down there, they'd see you. But mm-hmm. you're not like, you're not in the middle. Just, of, you're not in the middle of a bunch of people. Yeah, I'll do my best to just try to pull a corner loose so that we can just kind of slide in without taking the whole like thing off. So once we're in, it still looks like it's boarded up. Okay, so you pop a few boards off um, down below. You can kind of crawl underneath. Mm-hmm. Um, and you are inside, and it is, uh, it's pretty dark, and smells an awful lot like burned wood. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I will do a search. Okay. If I get us a perception sense out of uh, either one of you, or both, take a look around. I think I'm going to specifically see if I can try to figure out if I can see where it started like if it was an obvious starting point for the blast or fire or whatever it is um let's see if i can find that okay so you look around you know and you, you spend a, a bit of time kind of trying to figure like looking for this you know the the worst burned areas right um which is basically what you have to work with because you're not exactly a uh exactly. forensics arson investigator <laughs> yeah um, not that that science has been invented yet um, but, uh, yeah, the, the most burned area is, be- oh, look at a pair of Lucky Lucianos. Um, <laughs> oh, I haven't, I haven't drawn mine yet, so. We're getting there. Okay. Um, oh, well, cool. you get, uh, yours is going to be an expertise, um, sciences check here. We're looking at, like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this is like, this is, this is not just, you find a burn, the most burned area. That's easy to find, but trying to figure right. out if that's, if that's where the explosion started and kind of how the fire went, what it did. That's like, yeah, that's a, that's a chemistry question. Well, I have one more poll, so. Okay. Let's see if I, um, oh, look, <laughs> at all those, look at all those clubs. I love them. I'm going to stick with the ace of clubs just because my favorite you know card okay my favorite card it's a good card um yeah you find um that uh it looks like there was uh the if, if there was uh if there was an explosion and it wasn't just like if it wasn't just a fire that caught and spread quickly um if it was an explosion proper then um that you know spread fire around quickly it was um it it, it was in the location of like the the, the stoves have been removed um, but you can tell it's kind of where the stoves were, right? It's uh, there's a big gap, well, that, there's a big gap on the wall. With that ace of spades, would I be able to tell for this explosion versus a fire based on like shrapnel? Like, is there debris that looks like it's been blown out from that area? Uh, um, sure, yeah. With the it's... with the with the boon, okay. I'll say that you can kind of make out there's spots where like the counter, uh, the wooden counter and the cutting boards and everything that were kind of next to the stove were turned were shredded and turned into shrapnel, um, and they were kind okay. of blown out. And there's spots where there's like a few, a few little bits and pieces of. They, they've, they've cleaned up a lot of the debris, um, mm-hmm. just because otherwise it's just a breeding ground for rats. Um, and yeah, for, but imagine there's like chunks stuff. taken out of the wall. There's, and there's, stuff like yeah, there's that. chunks of the plaster wall that's chipped out. There's there's chunks of wood that's kind of that are kind of embedded in the plaster. 
Well, it looks like something blew up in here. More than just a petty arson. This thing had some force. Yeah. Um, it's 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 impossible to say without actually seeing the stove. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it was like what was it? Was a gas line just? busted open and then something else lit it was uh was the stove itself tampered yeah. with or you know that that sort of thing you just don't have the physical okay. the physical objects to inspect okay uh, i'm looking around the whole area okay just trying to see if there's anything unusual that i spot or just anything that jumps out at me um, um you take a look around and there's um, the, the place has been cleaned up pretty good mm -hmm. um, and the debris has been removed, but there's a few spots where there's um, like bloody smears um, and um, like the remnants, uh, just a, a, a few just sparse remnants of clothing like something that got torn or shredded or or, yeah. or 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 you know maybe just got damaged got left behind um so like you know there were clearly people here but there's nothing specific there's like not anything that's gonna point to any in particular person it's just it's just like a few a few leftovers from a okay. horribly tragic happening okay you know if kieran were here he could do that weird mumbo jumbo he doesn't talk to the uh, objects in the room and see what really happened yeah too bad he's not well here. <laughs> maybe we can bring him a thing oh that's not a bad idea i'll uh, look around for like um something that would have been in the kitchen something from the kitchen like just a small object that i can pick up maybe you know a cup or a spoon or whatever um Um, sure. You find, uh, that, uh, uh, kicked under a counter or kicked under a cabinet, um, is a, uh, a small carving knife that got, like, got dropped, kicked. It got blown by the blast or it maybe it just got kicked there, you know, kicked, uh, at some point in the ensuing chaos, or maybe it was just kicked around when people were clearing the place out after the fire had been put out and everything. Um, it ended up underneath a counter or underneath a cabinet. Okay. I'll tuck it away in my uh, secret pocket, dimensional pocket. So okay. it's nice and safe. Uh, Ollie, I feel weird to stand here in the place where I die. Are you okay? You I don't. If you want to. You don't I have to stay here. I want to go ask people upstairs. Okay. Well, let's do that then. Okay, cut back to uh, the precinct. Kieran and Rose, what are you up to? How much time do we have before it gets dark? <laughs> Several hours. <laughs> turn and look at Rose and I go, well, I've uh, got a potential lead, but we'll have to wait a couple of hours before we can follow it up. Was there anything else that you wanted to do while we were here? Yes, but it requires me to steal some money first. <laughs> All right. I'm game. So let's pick a place that is Rich in blood, but not too rich that people would write about it in the news. Unlike what we did with that library. So a pawn shop. Or <laughs> maybe a jewelry store? Not a high-end one. There's a really nice jewelry store down in Little uh, uh, little Ukraine. Mm. <laughs> no. Maybe not that, that one. No, that's <laughs> definitely not. I was thinking more of a museum type deal. Museum. A museum? If 
they're not going to have large amounts of available cash at a museum. I mean, we can steal stuff no, there. No, but there's going to be a large amount of available humans who we can walk past and actually steal money from. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry, but I'm not really seeing the difficulty of going through a museum one room at a time without people really realizing what you're doing until the last possible epic moment. So. <laughs> you know what? You lead the way. <laughs> it's their first me. date. They're going to a museum. <laughs> They're going to go steal from people at a museum. Oh, you're going to tell your kids about this. <laughs> yep. Daddy, mommy, what did you do on your first date? Well, your well, father forgot to dance with me all that one night. So. Well, Sally, we stole from the rich and gave we to ourselves. Stole. Bunch of pigeons. Yeah. Um, okay, so you find you find yourself a museum. Um, uh, you're you're looking for, um, well, I mean, this era. There's you know, um, you know, m uh, art museums um, and science museums, those sorts of things. There's not anything too weird or out of the out of the ordinary. Um, so an art museum so. will probably have the highest amount of. Uh richer blooded people going to it sure um okay um so you find uh the art museum you pay your you know 50 cent admission to get in um and you start wandering around and um yeah there's a, a fair number of fairly hoity-toity types walking about um in nice clothing uh there's uh you know there, there's actually a handful of um uh, I wouldn't say like you know like lower level lower middle you know not that there's really a middle class but like there uh, that not that there's there's not a lot of lower class people but there's you know there's a few people that look like they're a little more unkempt their clothes aren't quite as nice they you know they're a little older um, that uh, have decided to uh, expand their horizons and uh, take in some of uh, what the art museum has to offer paying the uh, the admission, which was probably a pretty hefty sum for them. So who are you going to steal from? Well, Rose is going to be the tricksy person she is. And she's going to steal from the rich. <laughs> and then half give to the poor. Oh, good lord. Okay. Um... Just not in a nice way where she's like, here, have some money. More like, uh, I stuff this in your pocket. Okay, this is the way we're going to do this. I'm going to call it... Um... Um, a uh, uh, agility sleight of hand check at disadvantage. You are in a museum when people, where people are. There are a number of people who are in here whose sole job it is is to keep an eye on all of you folk and make sure no shenanigans happens. Can I run interference? Um, you can run some interference. Um, it's not going to re reduce the disadvantage. Okay. Um, you know, like so it's you, just can, one you, you can't. Right? You can't. It's one less card, right? Kieran, you can't uh, you can't distract enough guards all at once unless you cause a scene. Um, but like, there's you know, we're talking multiple security guards plus people that are you know out and about, uh, and just a lot a lot of people. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, I have the perk of lucky. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, that turns that into a good Joker, doesn't it? Mm, or does it just make no? It allows me to continue. To uh, resolve my turn. Okay. What does Lucky say? All right. Uh, Lucky, once per session, when you botch, you succeed instead. If the botch card is the bad Joker, do not end your turn and continue to resolve the turn. We're really lucky you have that. <laughs> oh, yes. Especially since I'm going to sit on this. Okay. Um... You uh, bust out <laughs> the Ace of Hearts. Ah! <sighs> Ruining all my fun. Um, and you manage to, uh, to, to lift, uh, we'll say, oh, $150 in cash, just like in billfolds and stuff like that, um, along with um, a very nice pocket watch um, and two bracelets. All right, I'm probably going to cut the money in half and uh, spread it around the poorer folk, especially 
And then I think I'm just going to keep the, the watch and the bracelets. Kira's going to actually stop you and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? He's making a scene. Why are you giving these people the money you just stole? I'm only giving them half. Okay, but you don't think that's going to draw maybe a little attention? <laughs> oh, I think it's going to draw attention to the You're people You're dropping here. 20s into the pockets of these people. That's going to raise some red flags, don't you think? I grab Kieran by the arm and hold his arm tight and say, Aw, come on, babe. It's not that bad. <laughs> okay, fine. I was going to say, <laughs> Kieran, Kieran, Kieran is now making a decision whether or not this is going to be a good first date or a bad first date. Karen really wants it to be a good first date. <laughs> what a great, what a great date. Um, okay, so you, um, yeah, let's let's do another check just as a kind of a, a, a check to cover everything. It'll be agility, sleight of hand to surreptitiously slip some money into some of the uh, into the pockets of uh, a few of the less well-to-do patrons of the museum. It's still once again with this. Right. Um, yeah, okay. with uh, with disadvantage, minus one card. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, clubs. Oh. <laughs> I'm a spend a maxi. <sighs> That'll be fine. Not um, the best. You, uh, you slip... Um, you manage to uh, uh, slip a little money into a couple of people's pockets... And there comes a point where you have a very close call where um, you, uh, you you get the attention um, of a security guard who starts to kind of really pay close attention to you at this point. You manage to pull off a little bit of what you were intending to do, but now you've got um, a guard that's kind of paying closer attention, keeping an eye on you. All right. I notice that I'm being paid attention to and give a flirtatious little wiggle of the fingers and looks. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, oh, hi there. <laughs> uh, you get, like, zero reaction out of this guy. He stone-faced. Um... Well, Rose is probably going to call it the day then and get okay. out of here. <laughs> um... All right. Uh, conclusion of the date. Uh, you guys uh, think think for a little while, and um, we'll have uh, you rate the date. Um, we'll jump back over to uh, Ali and Satroka, um, Owen and Shireen. Would you like to rate the date? Was that was that a good? <laughs> how was that? Was that a good first date? I think uh, it was a good concept. <laughs> uh, you know, pickpocketing is a wonderful first date activity. Uh, I just think maybe the setting could have could have been improved on. Does that mean me and Satroka already had our first date? <laughs> Unofficially, yeah. Can, can I drop her Kieran to see how well he did with, with pickpocketing people? Was, was wow. Kieran pickpocketing people? I'll say yes. That's alright. Oh, sure. You want to pickpock somebody, pickpocket somebody on the way out? Sure. While you're being okay. watched. Well, I mean, you're kind of, kind of being watched, but yeah. So disadvantage. Good okay. lord. Yeah, agility. And while he's doing game. that, uh, Ollie would probably rate that date pretty low because there was uh, no drinking you know, whatsoever. Yeah, and there was no car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ten of spades. Uh, you pull like a, you know, ten dollars off of somebody, and you don't get seen in the process. That's your spades. That's your boon. Okay. The, the the guard doesn't doesn't see you anything because the guard's paying closer attention to Rose. Can I say it was I pulled the ten dollars from the guard, no. like as he was looking at Rose? No. You want to spend you want to spend a moxie for that? Sure. You know what? I'm going to spend a moxie for that. <laughs> I, I I lift the money he's got in his pocket as as we're walking out the door, and after we're out of visual range, I hand it to Rose. <laughs> okay. Not 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 a bad attempt. 
But next time we would go for more of a personal victory than a yes, a personal moral victory. So here you go. She hands him back the ten dollars. <laughs> nothing he shrugs. Quite, nothing quite like a really competitive couple. Um, okay, so back to Ali and Satruka. What are you guys up to now? I, I I apologize. I lost track here. I believe we were going upstairs to talk to the residents. Right. Okay, so um, yeah, I mean, you can. This is this is the day and age when, like, you know, getting inside, getting into an apartment building, bah, that's easy. You can just walk in the door. Um, now, you know, the, the individual apartments will be locked. Um, one would assume, but uh, yeah, you can get inside and pick a yeah. pick a door, knock on doors, call for people, whatever you want to do. Um. Uh, before we start knocking um, on doors, I mean, you, you um, can pick. You can pick like you know. You you can kind of make out where the which apartment is like over, the um, the restaurant or, you know, mm -hmm. in, in what part of the building. So you you know that's all easy enough to make out. Okay. What do you think, Ollie? Uh, well, we uh, we probably have to have a reason for asking questions around here. Um, do you want to come up with something elaborate, or should we just, you know, be upfront with it? Uh, we, we, what is we say we are uh, writing for newspaper? That works. Uh, uh, they might want to see some press credentials, but um. Mm. <laughs> that is problem. Uh a private investigator but they probably ask for a license then um, uh, yeah if you if you if you claim to be an officer or a private investigator yeah. they're going to want to see they're going to want to see a badge um mm -hmm. is, if you um you know as far as press goes um you know this day and age there's really not press credentials so to speak it's like you know why would somebody mm -hmm. claim to be a newspaper reporter if they're not a newspaper reporter well i mean that's ridiculous. they had press passes like the old Max Fleischer cartoon, Superman carries a press pass. <laughs> yeah, but that's more... That's but, yeah. one of those things that gets you into an event. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, so I'll pull out, like, a, a notebook <sighs> to, uh, to take notes. Okay. Uh, they get a little more, like, official. And, we, you know, I make sure that we both are not recognizable as ourselves, as best we can. Uh... And yeah, I guess we'll start with the the, the apartment right over the um, like over right over the the restaurant because that seems like the best. Sure. Over okay, the kitchen area. Sure. You go over, right. knock on the door. Um, a few seconds pass, and um, um, an older gentleman opens the door. Um, he's uh, uh, bald with a little ring of white hair that's uh, unkempt um, he's wearing uh, very simple clothes um, that are that are nice clothes but probably he's probably been wearing them for a few days um, and so he's a, he's a little ripe <laughs> good day I, sir I, <laughs> I'm gonna I'll just jump in with it yeah uh, yeah I, I'm just giving him the politest smile I could muster with a, while trying to hold my breath Ollie's face doesn't even change. He's just, good day, sir. We're from the Tribune, and we'd like to ask a few questions about the fire that was downstairs the other day. What? The Who fire? What do you want? <laughs> sir, we are from the Chicago Tribune, and we would like to ask you about the fire. Well, there, <laughs> was a, <laughs> there was a fire downstairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, do you know anything about it? Scared the hell out of me. Can we I'll, get a statement on that? Um, I'll start taking some notes. <laughs> well, what what do you want to know? Anything you can tell us would be helpful. Um, we're just trying to get a lead on the story here before it gets too buried in all this other nonsense around town. If you'd like your name in the paper, you might want to, you know, if anything will refresh your memory, you might get your name in the paper. <laughs> um, he proceeds to give you a story um, of, you know, I was, I was at home waiting for my daughter to come over. We were going to talk more about her upcoming 
wedding, and then she goes, and then he could, like side sideways into a story about uh, his, his daughter and how she's just you know, recently uh-huh. engaged, um, and and you steer him back, and so this takes a little while. He he sidetracks a couple of times. Um, that there was you know there was this explosion. This was his 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 daughter had just arrived. There was an explosion. Um, it was it shook the you know it shook the apartment and knocked a whole bunch of uh, um, you know it, it knocked uh, 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 photographs off the wall and um, broke you know knocked, uh, broke some glasses and dishes in his kitchen um, and his his uh, um, his daughter helped him out to the back of the building and down um, a fire escape. They didn't go out the front door um, because there was chaos out on the street. There were people screaming and yelling. Um, and, uh, he said that, you know, he, he, he and his daughter waited kind of back in that alley back. I mean, you've been back there actually. It was like, that's where you went in the back door of the place. He, they went down, down the corridor, out the back, there's like a window, um, and out, um, a fire escape and down and kind of waited down in that alley away from the back door. Um, and we're, you know, they were outside for, for several hours while the firemen, uh, the firefighters came out and put everything out and then the police came in and they they were talking to people took statements and the ambulances came and there was a coroner that showed up um and it, it he said he ends it with and it just it ruined the entire day <laughs> i'm sure i'm sorry about that so terribly sorry and he, yeah he, um, re, he recounts in a fair amount of detail like just like everything that happened it was a, it was like a seven or eight hour thing before he was able to Mm-hmm. Uh, even talk to anybody about going back upstairs and then he had to go stay with his daughter for the for the night because they the officers wanted to go up and look around and they wanted to make sure everything was going to be safe and then you know while he was with his daughter there's a whole other start of story you know another set of stories that he kind of gets into about like what happened to him that night and now he's completely off the topic he's not talking about the the building yeah uh, i'm gonna but he didn't, try did to he mention like one more question yeah uh, and pardon me, sir. Well, you were out back waiting for the police and the fire department to take care of their business. Did you happen to see anything that would strike you as odd or suspicious? Perhaps someone running away from the building that uh, you don't recognize? You know, I, I felt it was odd. There was a there was a woman back there who was watching. She she wasn't she didn't help anybody she wasn't there didn't seem to be there with anybody she just she was watching everything that was going on I, and i presume that you are probably pretty familiar with your neighborhood with the, the the folks you see around here on a regular basis right oh i know all of them i look out the window i see i and, and she wasn't one of these uh familiar neighborhood residents no never saw her before could she you was... describe her for me um, he gives you a description that sounds sp- suspiciously like your ice queen. Well, thank you for that, sir. That uh, that could be very helpful. Um, if we if we get a break in this story soon, uh, you might see your name, maybe perhaps in the Sunday edition. So keep your eye out. Well, thank you for your time. Um, before you leave, he double checks that you've spelled his name correctly, and he spells it for you. Oh, yeah. He spells it for you three times. Just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> Even though she's written most of everything in Russian. <laughs> Arthur Ziegfeld. And it's DT at the end. DT. F E L D T. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm very familiar with the DTs. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Spoken like a true alcoholic. <laughs> the character, uh, everybody, that's his character, and he's not actually, because I don't think you ever really get truly <laughs> drunk anyway. Um, uh, well, I can control it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Can I so can all drinkers. We're fine. I when I want to. Yeah, all, ad- all addicts can control it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's fine. Everything's fine. Alrighty. So yeah, that you you uh, mm-hmm. you finally pry yourself away from Arthur. Mm. Well, that uh, was long winded, but I think we might have a lead. Yes, he, she was standing around. She had something to do with it. I think. So we know this ice queen is here in this uh, this land as well. 
But where would be the real question? Where do you think we can find her? Mm. If she come into neighborhood, uh, maybe other people see her? Mm. Perhaps. She was a cop in our time. I'm thinking she might not be over here. No. Because you think maybe she would uh, have gone in, in uniform and been, uh, would be easy to uh, not be suspicious. If you uh, set fire and then put on uniform, turn, go around and help, no one think it you, right? That's what I would do. So... I think it not. She not. Uh, so maybe we need to ask uh, not cops. That's <laughs> a start at least. Uh, we find a good dive bar with lot of uh, heavy drinker bad people. I'm liking this idea know. already. <laughs> Uh, do you think we're done here? Do you do you think we might be able to get any more information out of the fine people here, or uh, I I think uh, anybody might have seen any more than that. Yeah, unless anyone else know uh, who she is. Do you want to try, or do you want to go get a drink? <laughs> I need drink. Let's go get a drink. <laughs> All right. And with that, <laughs> Our police work is done. Um, <laughs> the uh, uh, Kieran and Rhodes, um, uh, it's it's not quite night. It's not quite the evening yet. Uh, the sun has not gone down yet. Um, but uh, we can say, you know, if if you want, it's up to you guys. Um, we can say that you you know you split up with the intention of meeting back somewhere and perhaps at that bar, whatever bar it was you decided to go to, or whatever speakeasy. Sorry. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could you could potentially um, be back together while you're waiting to yeah to do whatever okay. whatever's next. I just speech. try not to split the group up any longer than absolutely necessary, unless you feel it's necessary. Where you know, if you want to keep it split, that's fine. But I'm giving you the like, option. It could be nice to reconvene and all share notes and have Kieran talk to the knife and <laughs> <laughs> while we kill time till evening. Show me yeah. what you got. <laughs> I want the knife, please. Yeah, so I guess we'll meet up. Um, sure. You guys, uh, you you all get back together. Um, whoop, magically, dinner time. Have something to eat, um, and then uh, have a drink at um, a local speakeasy that you manage to hunt out um, with your father's help, <laughs> with uh, Mister Panatella's help. Mm-hmm. It's a it's Russian. A it's a Russian place. They they've got vodka. They've got good vodka. Out of character, do we recall the name of uh, Ice Queen Lady from our world? Like, because I know she had a name that we probably knew uh, at some you know, point. She was referred to as Lizzie. Um, Lizzie. By, okay. By Giuseppe Sacamano. But we never yeah. got a last name. We never got a last name. Okay. Petroka. Hmm. And you didn't hang what around long enough when she found out she was a cop. Do you, do you mind if I, uh, you and I talk for a little bit? Of course. Oh, the girls are going to dish on the date already. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, over here in private. Mm-hmm. So we split the group up in a different way. We're sure. in the same area, just a lot further away. Sure. Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. I just think that Kieran thought what we did today might have been okay. I'm not really certain if I feel the same. Oh. <laughs> that can be. I suggested we go to a museum because he literally spent all of our money to get some more information out of the comp. Oh. So okay. I needed money and. We went to a museum. My first thought was, oh, yes, money, museum. <laughs> His first thought must have been, ah, museum, date. Uh. 
So I don't know how to feel. Well, if you didn't mm, talk about then maybe he not say anything, you don't say anything, leave it see how you feel because maybe you now just sometimes you meet someone, you like them, it scare you, it freak you out. So maybe give time. Don't that's make a, don't make big deal. Yeah. That that sounds like a pretty good idea. You, you know my past. You you know what I've been through. So Sorry. That might be a good plan. You you know my past, you know what I've been through. So that might be a pretty good plan to just let it be for now. Okay, cut to the guys. <laughs> Ollie's just trying to get Kieran to talk to the dynamite. <laughs> yeah, he's talking to the dynamite. <laughs> what? Talking to the dynamite. We're going to have a conversation with some dynamite. So having no discussion about the date, nothing, no no feelings being exchanged. You guys, you are such guys. We're drinking and playing with a stick of dynamite that Karen is talking to. Um, the dynamite, uh, sure, you, you, you use your power to talk to the dynamite, and uh, you get a lot of... Um, uh, uh, it, it, the dynamite seems like it's, it really wants to blow up bad. Like it's like its whole purpose <laughs> in life is to explode. It knows this and it's, it's wondering why it's, why it's taking so damn long. <laughs> Look, we'll get there. I promise you just have to be patient. Okay. Tell me he sounds like a roided out dude, bro. Please. <laughs> Do you even explode, bro? You will have, you will have your moment to shine. Do you okay? even explode, bro? Um, he's, uh, 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 yeah, okay. I'm not gonna... You don't explode, bro. <laughs> what does that even mean? Do you even explode, bro? Um, is that you, you, you promise? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna, no, we're not doing this. The, the, the dynamite is, yeah, the dynamite wants to blow up. You know that much. Um, we're just feeding the, the, the Chekhov's dynamite here. Um, so uh, what you're saying is you sit around and, and, and chit chat about whatever and nothing. And have a drink. Uh, I actually, yeah, I will ask. Uh, I will ask Ali. Do you maybe have something more useful that I can talk to <laughs> here? Oh, I, S- find something. Satroka. Yeah, Satroka has a knife. Okay. Can, um, I, can I please talk to that? Because I don't think I can talk to this dynamite anymore. It's it's just like a loop. <laughs> It just keeps going on, on, and, just, on and on and on. Honestly, I've just, just wondered what he sounds like. I just want to blow up. 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 Why are you Kira keeping deact- me from my destiny? Kira deactivates his power. He's like, I just can't. I just can't right now. And you hear, bad, bad, and you continue to hear it in your head. His and you know off. you're going to have a dream tonight. <sighs> <sighs> oh, that was totally worth it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, have a <laughs> you can you can get the knife at this point. Okay, I will. Uh, I will try to talk to the knife. All right. Uh, what do you got to do for that? Um, kind of blew past it for the dynamite, just for comedic effect. I don't think I actually have to. Let's do... let, let's double check it. We ha- you haven't spoken to an object for a while, so I want to make sure. Um, I do have to. Uh, Jeez, Craig, you designed the game. Why don't you know? I know I have to boost it in order to talk to a knife. <laughs> right, because it's a complex object or more more complex object. It's not a it's not a rock. It's a. T- I thought complex object means it had moving parts. Um, like a pistol or a motorcycle, as the book says. It, says again. it would be a simple object. A simple yeah. object. Yeah. Boost for. Simple man-made stuff. Yeah, you get, you can only oh, talk to like natural objects. You need the simple object boost to talk to things that have been created by people, and then complex objects. Which uh, moving I, I have that boost. Yep, yep. So I can Does talk. Does a stick it. of dynamite count as a simple object or a complex object? Uh, simple. I think it counts as a funny object. <laughs> Given it's. Uh, when am I going to blow up? When am I going to blow up? When am I going to blow up? Mind, it's probably fairly simple. <laughs> um, sure. So you can talk to, talk to the knife. Okay, I I talked to the knife. Um, 
So, uh... Knife. <laughs> what can you tell me about the, uh... The fire, what happened? Everybody died. Okay. There's fire everywhere. Was there a, uh... Did you see anyone start the fire? No, I was... I was making food. I was doing my job. I was... Everything... Maybe. Everything was normal, and then there was fire. I was, okay. I was kicked. I was dropped. There was screaming. Did it tell you who did it yet? He didn't see anything. It's a he, then. I mean, it sounds like a he. That's just because it's Craig talking. Could just be a base. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Curious. Inside Objects are usually center of knives. <laughs> Anyways, um, it, it was uh, all, fire, all fire and burning, all fire and burning. Everything was on fire. There was people screaming. It was all fire. Just he's. It says that there was fire and burning. It got dropped, kicked underneath the, the counter. Screaming and crying. Screaming and crying. Ask us if it saw anyone in the kitchen that uh, wasn't normally there. Did, did you see anyone in the kitchen who wasn't supposed to be there? Someone who was maybe new or different? It was just all fire and burning. There was... The people there, there were the ones who were there, supposed to be there, and there was all, and it was just, and then, and then there was fire, and then went, everything was on fire, and people were screaming, and it was burning, and everyone was dying. Hmm. Sorry, Ali, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this knife. Uh, See anything? Right. Well, it was worth a shot. So, what do you want me to do with this knife now? <laughs> Am I just going to hold on to this? Do you want it back? No. That's, that's no. entirely up to you. Give it to me. Come on, just, who's taking I'm the, sorry. I think, I think Rose is having a conversation. Right now. Who's taking the traumatized <laughs> carving knife? <laughs> that is then probably going to use it for a weapon to carve people. Actually, you know what? Kieran will hold on to it. He'll <laughs> like, clean off the blade and he's like, it's okay. Good. It's gonna become a sentient kitchen knife. <laughs> turn it it's into be okay. a, turn it into a familiar. It's like your warlock pack weapon. It can, it can protect your kitchen. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Tells you when the garlic's gone bad. Well, that was a bust. Uh, next time you, you all have of course, luck. next time you talk to the knife, it's gonna say, "Hey, the dynamite asks when it's gonna blow up. When is it gonna blow up? When is it gonna... okay?" No, it doesn't. <laughs> I'm keeping the dynamite. You gotta you tell that dynamite right? it'll blow up when I'm ready for it to blow up. Not a moment before. I think you should tell him that yourself. <laughs> I'm not getting caught in the middle of this. I'm just a knife. Anyway. Um... <laughs> this has gotten out of hand. <laughs> Damn, um... Don't tell me to deliver your messages for you triangulated conversation. Go over there and talk to him like a grown up. Um, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, you've got uh, you've got a knife that's uh, just just is is just hung up on being in an explosion and a lot of people dying. Oh, for a knife, it doesn't seem to have much of a... It seems to have a pretty dull wit. Womp womp. <laughs> I'm taking a moxie away from you. Do it. Do it. I dare you. I did. I'm going to put it back. I, uh... I'm not like that. Um, okay, so anyway, back on track, everybody. Uh, uh, so what's what's the plan? Um, it's getting... You all uh, have the, any more the, luck. the sun is going down. It's getting It's getting later. Oh, yeah, we share our information about uh, who was seen out back, and I imagine we just kind of go over, over everything we discovered, that there was an actual explosion, not just a fire, Sure. Um, that we think Lizzie was out back, and that we're in this particular speakeasy to try and see if we can see if anybody knows her. And then okay. you all would share your piece. It's a good, solid plan. Um, Kieran bribed a police officer by telling him some information that he now has to go retrieve. 
Yeah. And I still have to visit a flower shop today. Okay, so so what's the plan? Well, uh, I mean, at this point, it's getting it's it's dark out. The the flower shop, I mean, more than likely closed. Mm. At this point, um, this is the day and age when yeah, when the sun goes down, that's usually um, yeah. Yeah, the the great the great thing about the twenties is that uh, the the consumer, the American consumer culture has started, and the work week is getting shorter, um, and people actually can have the weekends off and can actually do something, do st- do things and spend that money. But and with the work week getting shorter, that means also that people aren't necessarily working until nine at night, unless you're a farmer, um, <laughs> or a, or a miner, you're probably working a lot. Uh, so yeah, you've got it's it's it's. It's that evening. Um, you've got your cop, your uh, the desk sergeant to talk to. Yep. Is uh, wow. is everybody going? Um, what's what's the I'm plan? Fig- How are you approaching this? So I figured we would try to talk to people in the bar and see if they knew anything about Lizzie and where if she's from the area or whatnot. Um, yeah, because it's a bad idea to bring Ozzy to the police station. I'll go with Kieran and Well, you could be nearby. Problem. You don't necessarily have to be like, yeah. you know. I, I think I would want to do that and then try to tag along, at least to stay at a distance in case something goes wrong at the police station. Just because, like, something about having to meet the cop after hours after a bribe doesn't sit well and feels a little bit like a trap. Yeah. Um, so I think Ollie would definitely want to at least tag along for that. But he'd want to get his questions in at the bar before leaving because that was the whole point of coming here. So. All right. Um, so uh, you're going to ask around. What, do you, what, what, what are you? What are you asking? Who are you talking to? Like, how are you approaching this? Um, I'm gonna start with the bartender and just pretty much uh, while we're up there, ask him if they if there's a person of this description that comes in on the regular, um, goes by Lizzie or Elizabeth. Um, and just see if he recognizes her by her description or her name. Okay. Um, Slip a little money. Charisma diplomacy. Just kind of asking around at the bar. Yeah. That'll work. I don't have diplomacy, but I've got two charisma. Nine. Eight. I'm going to use a moxie. Please be better. <laughs> Uh, I could go back to the nine, but I'm not sure if it, that's even going to be good enough to help me out. Can I help him? Um, I mean, at this point, you could be, you could make your own check. You could talk to other people. Um, the bartender doesn't know anything. Um, okay. That doesn't sound. No, nope. sorry, sorry, Mac. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll try. Familiar. I mean, I'll just there's, start there's, up. there's women that come in, but nothing, nothing really jumps out for me. Uh, to start up a conversation, this, you know. With an ace of spades. Ace of spades. <laughs> you know. Look at Satroka being the charismatic one. Uh, you end up talking to one of the barflies who looks like, you know, one of those people that kind of has that spot at the end of the bar that they're always there. While you while you while you've been in the while, <laughs> got like a groove. Well while you while you've been school. here, you've seen like, you know, a good dozen people have talked to them. Um, in, in a very friendly manner, like they know him. Is um, his name Norm? Uh, sure. <laughs> Why not? No, it's, Cl- no. it's Cliff, actually. Um, <laughs> no, it, nice. uh, and and uh, you, you get to talking with him, and he says, uh, Oh, there was, uh, I don't know that I've seen anybody that looked like that, but there was, there have been, there have been police officers in here looking, talking about a woman like that. Couple, oh, couple of they are looking for her. Hmm. That's, that's good to know. Um, he says that, and he kind of eyes his um, his mug, which is nearly empty, down to the last sip. Oh, I buy him And he finishes drink. the sip, and he kind of sits it down in front of himself, and he's looking awfully despondent at that 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 mug is just it just empty. Yeah. It's like it's. I, I think I still have a few bucks left, so I'll uh, I'll buy him a 
another drink. Yeah, you buy us, yeah, you us some you, drinks. You put a dime on it. You put a dime on the bar and get him a beer because it's the twenties and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, he says, uh, "Yeah, they were in here uh, a few few weeks ago, asking about her." They haven't, have names. haven't been in your the policeman. Hmm. Oh. No, they have name for person, or they just use description. It was a description, and they were asking that uh, she was wanted in connection with some fires. Hmm. Okay. I but don't. I don't remember the detective's name. But nobody see her. Not come in here? Uh, not that I know. Hmm. You know course, anybody? Of course, if she's wanted for anything, if the police are looking for her, then if she's smart, she's hmm. keeping a low profile. Mm -hmm. She's not going. She's not going to places where a lot of people are. If she's smart. So, do you know a uh, place to drink where maybe there are not lots of people? All the best places have people. Oh, yes. Um, but you if you wanted maybe to have a drink where nobody see you? Around here? There's, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, the, up just north of here a little bit, there's an Irish place called the Shamrock. Well, they call it the Shamrock. It doesn't have a sign, you know, because of the illegal thing. Of course. Um, but people call it that because it's an Irish place. Hmm. You never go in? Those places get too loud. <laughs> This, yes, not your thing, I see. No, I like it with people that I know and where it doesn't get real loud and you can talk and have a nice conversation mm, with yes, a beautiful young lady. Mm, yes, we are having very nice conversation. But uh, Shamrock, hmm. you know anybody who like to go there? Is filled with loud Irish people, mostly. I Are there any uh, loud Irish people come here? Well. Did someone call? <laughs> <laughs> there's the there's the Shaughnessy girl that she stops by now and again, but I think she does that just to get a bottle for her. For her uncle or her husband or or somebody. Mm. Do you know any of Shaughnessy's, Holly? Yeah, you know a crap ton of Shaughnessy's. <laughs> you might have to be a little more specific yeah, than that, dear. It's like asking, do you know any Smiths? Uh, <laughs> well, the, the one that he described. Not, not specifically, no. You've just, yeah, there's it doesn't Shaughnessy, ring a Shaughnessy is, a, is a relatively common name. In, in, yeah, I mean, if I can get him to describe her, um, would you be able to, to recognize her? It doesn't ring a bell. I probably know some of her family, but, you know, I can't place them. Okay. Uh, I think there's anything else takes I could a, ask. Takes a big swig back from his beer. Oh yeah, I'll buy him like a couple more beers. <laughs> Start lining them up. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm look at sure. all the little soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we having a drinking game here now? Always. <laughs> Ollie's gonna buy just as many. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> and we're gonna start tossing them back and see who can stay conscious longer. All right. <laughs> okay. I can't. I can't think of anything else to ask this guy at this point. So. So I'm just gonna drink him unconscious and then use my detoxify boost after. Yeah. Okay. Let's do. Let's go ahead. <laughs> let's go ahead and do this, tough guy. Let's go. Uh -huh. uh, let's go. Uh, 
Um, uh, 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 resilience, willpower. Let's see an actual check. How okay. fast do you put him down, or do you botch it? Because we've been seeing bad jokers occasionally here, and I'd really love to, who Rick, uh, uh, show of hands. Who would love to see Ollie actually get drunk under the table by this guy? <laughs> I mean, me. All right, so let's 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 draw the let's draw the cards and see what happens. Oh, All right. that's a well. I have five to pull. Yeah, so. I know, I know. You go ahead. Um, Jeez, I'm not pulling good ones. Oh my. Oh, is he going to spend a moxie just to drink an old dude I under mean, the table? Are we doing like one drink at a time or is this for the no, whole? No, this is for the night. This is whether you get drunk under the table or not. Right now, this is like one okay. of those situations where your honor has been besmirched because like, yeah, you're planning to just detoxify yourself after you after you make him pass out, but he's not passing out. He's keeping up with you. I mean, I'm going to cheat and detoxify myself in the middle then. But uh, well, I'm sorry, you're five cards in. You, <laughs> did, you didn't decide that already. This is like you can decide if you want to. If you want to detoxify Fine, yourself, I'll spend a moxie. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could get you to spend a moxie just to win. All right, I'll stay there. Hey, I got the king of spades. Um, you finally knock him under the table. After, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you're pretty well versnickered at this point, um, uh, but you managed to put him under the table. A, a, a stubborn old old coot. Not even an Irishman from the looks of things. <sighs> and Ollie's like, he shakes it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Uh, I believe we have uh, a meeting to attend to. Uh, yes. You all right? Right as rain. <laughs> And Ollie is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, we'll let you have if that you one. Could, we'll let you have that one back from getting it from 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 actually spending Moxie. I'll I'll give you another one back for <laughs> just to beat some old coot in the drinking contest. It's like that scene. Oh, so in, close! Um, <laughs> it's like that scene in Good Omens where they decide that they need to be undrunk again, and the wine just refills. <laughs> <that wine. laughs> okay, so. Um, off to uh, to meet your your bribery target. Is that the plan? Yep. Okay. Off you go. Uh, take a walk back over to the precinct. Who's approaching? Who's staying nearby? Where are you where are you hanging out? What's the plan for everybody? I think me and Ollie are gonna like hang out around the corner. Yeah. Um, I can spy and smoke form if you like. Whatever you feel like, it's, I'm just it's, here. It's dark out. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty easy to hide that way. Nowadays. Yeah. Well, ask ask uh, Karen. What you think. Um. Yeah. That'll work. Um, okay. Then I will stay nearby. Rose is gonna oh. attempt to be stealthy, but she's gonna do it in a way that makes it a little silly. Okay. <laughs> We remember the first game of her wearing a lovely red coat and standing on the door of fucking light. Oh yeah, so she was really obvious. <laughs> yeah, no, she's gonna do that except attempt to be stealthy with it. All right. So get arrested for prostitution. <laughs> <laughs> so you're wearing something really noticeable, but trying to be <laughs> sneaky and stealthy in the darkness. Okay, so it's it's simple enough that you know it's dark out, so you gain advantage, but you're wearing something that doesn't that stands out a little bit too much. So that's disadvantage. Those kind of cancel each other out. So it's just kind of a straight agility stealth check. Um, um, uh, uh, so Troka is is basically able to just kind of blend into the into nothing. Um, uh, with it being this dark out. Um, and uh, Ali is uh, kind of, like I guess, around a corner, you know, kitty corner, yeah, across, not... kitty corner across the street, kind of, you know, like yeah, far just... enough away that, you know, and not standing underneath a street lamp, um, no. you know, far enough away that, you know, like you, 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 when you're far enough away that you can't make out uh -huh. Kieran's detail in Kieran's face, then nobody can make out detail in your face. Yeah. Oh, look at those stealthy checks. <laughs> You sticking with that or? Well, I'm not going back, so here we go. All right. Rose once again fails at being stealthy while wearing the red coat. Um, Kieran goes over. Big surprise there. Kieran, uh, you you notice you see the uh, um. 
the the desk sergeant is outside um kind of on the side of the building on an alleyway there's a spot it's, uh, along this little alley there's a, a a number of cars parked and he's out there smoking a grit um uh, Sidroka is wherever you know you're near nearby ish nobody really knows for sure because it's a little dark Ali's kind of out across the street um over near a bench um but far enough away that you can't really make out any detail um and Rose is right there she's right there like she like hello she's right there <laughs> but she's also like you know she's not you know, jack in a car or beating somebody to a pulp. So she's just a person standing right over there. Um, and you uh, have your your police officer, your desk sergeant. I, I look over at Rose and wave. <laughs> and then walk over and go talk to him. Rose pretends not to notice. She's trying to be conspicuous. But it's not working. That's fair. That's fair. God, we're... we're you know, for a while there, you guys were really good gangsters, and now we are back to being worst gangsters <laughs> ever. Yeah. Um, you guys, yeah, it's a ebb and flow. Um, you walk over to the. Uh, it, it's a new Chicago. We have to start all over again. Yeah, that's true. Right. That's fair. Right. Um, you walk over to the desk sergeant. Yep. So, do you have a name for me? Um, he reaches into uh, his trousers pocket and pulls out um, a couple of pieces of paper that are folded up mm -hmm. and uh, hands them over to you. Doesn't unfold them or anything, just like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a pieces of paper that are folded in quarters, hands it to you, goes back to smoking his cigarette, kind of starts yep. starts to ignore uh, you at this point. Walk off. Um, okay, back out amongst the other folks. Um, Rose, you're just kind of watching this go down. Um, so Troka, you've got a bit of a vantage point from, I would assume you're kind of floating up above. That's your kind of yeah. standard MO. Um, yeah. and so, uh, uh, Ali and, and Satroka both give me uh, perception, um, sense okay. as you're kind of watching all of this from afar. Yeah. I'm gonna stick with that. Oh, I'll nice. stick with that one. I will stick with the King of Hearts. Um, Satroka, mm -hmm. you're uh, kind of floating around, watching everything. Ali, you're uh, standing there. He's like, "Oh yeah, there. he's talking to that guy over there." Um, <laughs> read the newspaper or something. You, you clearly see that uh, that Kieran is talking to a police officer um, with that nine. And uh, Satroka, however, you see um, that down at the far end of the alley where Kieran is having his little talk, um, mm -hmm. there's uh, another man who is uh, in a jacket and tie uh, with a fedora on. He's smoking a cigarette outside back there. Um, and, uh, he's got, he's, his like, he's glancing down at Kieran and the cop every so often. Um, and then out by the street, you see a man and a woman, um, who are in, um, like civilian, civilian clothes. They're not, uh, you know, um, in any uniform, they're not in anything that screams like police officer or detective or anything like that. Um, yes who are standing um, under a street lamp and um, the, uh, the woman is, you know, kind of looking down the street and they're talking. You can't really make out what they're saying. And she's looking down the street, but this guy is doing the worst job of pretending to not pay attention to what's going on. Cause he keeps giving the stink eye keeps giving a look to Kieran um, and the, uh, 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 desk sergeant and he's um, okay. kind of keeps looking keeps looking and he um, kind of tugs at his uh, his lady friend's shoulder and starts just like starts to take a couple of steps toward Kieran and as he's doing it he's reaching under his jacket um, oh uh, in, in, the, in, the, I will... in the classic 
going for the gun in the shoulder hol- holster move. Mm-hmm. And I, it's your turn. Your turn to react. I will descend uh, on him in a cloud of smoke. He's across the street. Okay. He's a little ways uh, away. You're watching this kind of from... You're in the alleyway, kind of. You, right. You saw it okay, to, I guess you we saw, can get you saw to You saw to one end of the alley and then back out toward the street as well. So he's okay. on the side of the street that I'm on, or a different street? Yeah, he's right out on the, on the street near you, Ollie, but you didn't... You know, like, I didn't see him. Well, I mean, yeah. you see him, but you don't pay him any heed because you flipped the knife. Yeah. Uh, I will float down next to Kieran. Um, and I can, you know, kind of control my shape and everything. Um, so in front of him... I'm going to make a swirl of smoke that kind of is almost like an arrow, you know, uh, gesturing. Oh, if you're doing that, then I get another card. To the guy. Um, but I'm just kind of doing it like right in front of uh, Kieran's face in an attempt to sort of look like a, uh, you know, passing cloud. Um, oh, a passing cloud, uh, a, a big people-sized cloud of smoke that is moving on its own. Cloud um, of smoke, yes, yeah, fine. Uh, sure, and, and and this king right here, um, is uh the uh the the uh, desk sergeant watching this strange happening of like this smoke coming down and it swirls around, um, right in front of the face of the person that he had just been talking to, and he. Uh, hey, I'm good at this. Come on. I, I, you're good at it, but he he did pull a king, although um, it's fine. Yeah, he's he uh um he he yells loud enough to be heard um by everybody. God damn capers and he runs down the alleyway <laughs> away from the street. Um and you see, as he's doing that, the uh, the fellow in the in the, the jacket and fedora down at the end of the alleyway pulls out a gun, um, in one hand and flips open a badge in the other and says, um, "Federal agent." And the two people out on the street start walking down toward the alleyway. Uh, what do all of you do? Has Ollie even seen any of this yet? Oh, you heard you heard him <laughs> scream, "Goddamn uh, capers!" Okay, and. Um, uh, yeah, you you hear the, the 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 person you know, it's it's off a little ways, but you hear somebody yell "federal agent." Yeah, I think Rose has noticed this as well. You all notice all of this. You all hear all of this now. <laughs> yeah, so I was gesturing. Well, it's a bit late because I, I'll just uh, head over to Oz Ollie. Um, I mean, Ollie is kind of barreling toward the situation now. <laughs> he sees people with guns. He doesn't care that they're federal agents. <laughs> I don't have weapons out or anything, but I'm I'm kind of heading into just kind of see what's going on. Okay, so you're heading right. kind of toward the direction of the of the alleyway. Um, yeah, and I'm going to keep my dodge boost active uh, at this point in time, just in case things get hairy. Okay, make a note of that for yourself. Um, Kieran yells. Puts up his hand and goes, whoa, whoa. Let's everybody calm down. We're all on the same side here. Okay. Um, he, he goes, can I just show you my credentials? Well, hang in there. Make a note of you saying that. Um, okay. Rose, what are you up to? Well, first I'm wondering if I heard Kieran say something. And also wondering if Ollie's running towards these people. Walking at a brisk pace. Uh, you see Ollie with that, you know, you've known Ollie long enough to know he's got violence in his in his heart and on his mind at this point. He's probably he's probably going he's in got there. That grin he's that he's says, he's I'm gonna punch somebody. Yeah, he's he's about to get in somebody's grill. <laughs> okay, well I'm up a pair in action then. I'm going to prepare my lovely fire firearm to shoot if they decide to pull the trigger on their gun. Okay, make a note of that. Satroka, what are you doing? Uh, I see um, Ollie trying to run over there and then uh, 
here and trying to talk. So I think I'm going to stay uh, in smoke form, but I'm going to get up again higher so I can get like a, a view of, you know, I can keep an eye on everybody okay. at the stage. Um, okay. Yeah, because I want to see what's going to happen before I make a decision. Okay. Make a note of that. That's what you're all doing. So everybody make a note of what you're doing. Um, that's going to uh, kind of put us on the brink of um, this little fed sting operation um, as uh, Rose and um, uh, 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 Kieran, all of a sudden it hits you as you're um, watching all of this start to unfold that the couple that's walking across the street, uh, the woman um, that is part of that duo she was inside the precinct sitting there while all of the discussion and hubbub was going on in the precinct while you were in there talking to the desk sergeant and everything. She was in one of the waiting room chairs. Um, and you recognize her there. And so we're going to pick up um, to see whether or not you have to kill a bunch of feds um, <laughs> at the next game session. <laughs> well, I mean, they're not our feds, right? They're oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah, feds, yeah. so it's fine. <laughs> They're, they don't they're like they're like word. goblins in D and D. Just like they're there. Yeah, yeah. They're, they don't care. They're dime a dozen. They're sacks of experience. They're just there to be killed. <laughs> well, <at least laughs> there's treasure too, obviously. Yeah, they try to loot when they die. <laughs> should I should I do the should I do the Austin Powers thing that like every time you kill um, uh, uh, an NPC, I cut to the scene where the police come to the NPC's family at their home and has to deliver the bad news, and you find out that like no, I'd rather I'd rather do the uh, 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 Scott Pilgrim version where they explode in a bunch of coins. Oh well, I, yeah, that's not this uh, game. <laughs> to, to be fair, Ollie has not pulled a weapon. And has not expressed intent to pull a weapon. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I've only raised a defensive boost, so. Okay, so everybody make yeah make a note of what you said you were getting ready to do there. In the next session, we'll dive into uh, seeing whether this escalates or whether Kieran can pull something out of his ass like he has done sometimes in the past. Uh, we'll yeah, see. it does seem to be a particular challenge. Well, he he went to the he went he, he he you did go to the go to Kieran. You immediately said like you know I'm going to start explaining myself and see if I can. Uh, it's not this. like Kieran doesn't have an FBI badge. He does. Nice. It's his identity is blown in the other universe, but not in this one. <laughs> oh, actually, I have one too. <laughs> <laughs> this is news to me. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna impose something from a character standpoint. There's no way in hell Ali remembered to take that with him. Oh no, I I wouldn't assume Ali would remember. <laughs> Here <laughs> so anyway um that was that's uh the wrap up to this session we're gonna see where everything goes next time around um and uh and see uh if the group manages to awesome. get out of this sticky situation whether they get uh, revenge on satroka's killer whether they get home what they do uh with everything else that they've got um coming down the pike at them so thank you everybody for listening um players thank you for for, for joining me uh, Thank you we're for going to us. wrap this up. Thank you for running the game. Bye bye, yes. everybody. Bye. bye.